Hi everybody, my name is Albert Ide, and I'm the producer-director of Bluegrass Country Soul. And during this series about behind-the-scenes look at the film, we're going to introduce you to some of the people who were responsible for making the film and capturing some of the greatest bluegrass musicians of all time. Now, we shot this back in 1971 at Carlton Haney's 7th Annual Labor Day Weekend Bluegrass Festival in Camp Springs, North Carolina. And I brought 14 members of a crew made up of friends and associates from Washington, D.C. and New York City down to Camp Springs. And we had three days to try and capture what we hoped would show the general movie-going audience what it was like to attend a bluegrass festival. And as I said, during these next couple of episodes, we're going to show you how some of the film came together and... Uh, expose some of the secrets behind making a bluegrass country soul. Let's start with Robert Kaler, our director of photography. Now Bob was a well-established uh, documentary filmmaker of his, on his own right up in New York City and he believed in the theory of cinema verite, the truth of cinema. That is, you simply aim your camera at what you're shooting and you don't add any special effects or any narration, any talking heads. Uh, and what we were able to do with the Bluegrass Country Soul was we used Carlton Haney as kind of a, a way of linking all the scenes together. And Bob, with his handheld camera, managed to keep a smooth track on all the different things we were trying to do, whether it was on stage or out in the field. And when we asked the country gentlemen if it would be all right with them, if we followed them from their bus up in the performer's parking area down to the stage, they were all in total agreement. And they said, let's try it. We got them starting on Matterhorn, which was going to be their first song in the set. And then we followed them down to the stage. from one John shot of uh, Charlie Waller singing to another shot. Now those of you who know the song well will have noticed already that we cut uh, a, a verse or two because we wanted to show the crowd that was gathering around them. And uh, it was quite a number of fans. And uh, when we finished the song, we didn't stop the camera. Bob just kept filming. We followed the band down through the trees to the stage. Now, this is not easy to do with a heavy camera. And Bob was able to walk alongside them. And, and Bob had to make several exposure adjustments throughout this walk. And rather than show you those camera moves, we cut away to the a band on the stage. Now, at the time, the actual band on the stage was the Bluegrass Alliance. But we didn't think it would be right to cut from one band to another in the middle of the sequence. And so we cut to the country gentleman singing Fox on the Run on stage, which was another song in their set. Tempted 
Now, Bob was able to capture the country gentlemen in more or less a natural setting with the way in which they interact with their fans. And their good humor. And holding a camera and keeping it steady like this is not that easy. And the steady cam, which many people have seen used in films, uh, wasn't invented until much later with the advent of the film Rocky. But uh, Bob kept the camera pretty steady all the way down. When he got to the stage door down in the basement behind the stage, there was no way he was going to be able to walk up the steps and continue filming. So we had uh, Billy Eggleston, our electrician, get inside the backstage area with some portable lights. So he was able to uh, get the lights on and Bob could shoot them coming up the steps and waiting to go out on the stage. Now meanwhile, I was shooting the second camera. Okay, so I had to run around out in front and get to the second behind. camera and and in order to get a shot of Bill Vernon festival. making this announcement Let's about the country right gentleman. For Rebel recording stars, the country gentleman from Washington, D.C. Then Bob, from backstage, walked through the curtain with the country gentleman out onto the stage. And this move, walking from behind the country gentleman and then walking all the way around to the front of them is a complicated move for anybody to make, let alone to make without any rehearsal. Now because we were we had a, a very low budget, we had a limited amount of film and a limited amount of time, Bob had to get this all done in one take. We couldn't afford to do any retakes. There was just the four of us against the Matterhorn. It was Albert the Australian and John the Irishman. Me and Bill from Britain, mad dogs in the sun. The last shot of this sequence was shot by our third cameraman, Bobby Decker. Robert Kaler is what is known in the industry as a filmmaker's filmmaker. And his talent, his hard work, and his good humor, and his dear friendship will be sorely missed. Now during the next couple of episodes we'll meet John Dildine, the sound man, our third cameraman Bobby Decker, and our editors Joel Jacobson and Doug McCash, and we'll also take a look at some of how Carlton Haney helped pull this whole film together. So until then, I hope you can tell your friends about our, our restored version of Bluegrass Country Soul and our box set. Ask them to visit our website, bluegrasscountrysoul.com. See you next time.